Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today, I'm looking at the five most overpaid players in the NFL heading into the 2021 season. But before getting into that topic, question for those of you and comment down below, who do you think is the most overrated player in the NFL? I want to hear your guys' thoughts and I'll give my answer at the end. But looking at the five most overpaid guys in the NFL, in my opinion, we're going to start off with the Cleveland Browns and Odell Beckham Jr. Odell Beckham Jr., Used to be one of the best in the league. We all know the amazing catch catch he got with the Giants. I kind of, I don't want to say made his career, but it definitely jump-started it. He was a special talent in New York, and even in Cleveland, the raw skill and potential is there from OBJ, but lately, the production just has not been. Even looking in his past four seasons, a lot of people think, oh, it's just this injury. OBJ's got to get over, and he'll be fine. In his past four seasons, his yards per each season is 319, 1,035, 1,052, and 302. Only two seasons topping a thousand, and even then it was barely topping a thousand. That is just not worth the money you're paying Odell Beckham Jr. He's making fifteen over fifteen million dollars this year, fifteen million seven hundred fifty thousand to be exact, and that is the eighth highest cap hit when it comes to NFL wide receivers. And like I said, while he used to be a top talent in the NFL right now, I don't, I don't even know if he's in my top ten receivers. He just shouldn't be making more money than guys like Stephon Diggs and Mike Evans, who are solidified top five top 10 receivers obj i think he could turn things around but right now just given his recent history he is not worth the value he is getting he's definitely not worth close to 60 million dollars in my opinion and the browns know that they know they're overpaying him at this point but still he is one of the most overpaid guys in the nfl and he's absolutely worth mentioning in this list moving to the next one is going to be another wide receiver but this gets even worse in my opinion Amari Cooper, he is the second highest cap hit when it comes to wide receivers in the NFL, making $22 million. Amari Cooper, when he was initially traded to the Dallas Cowboys, we thought this team was going to be seriously electric. They gave up a first rounder for him, and him and the Dak, and Amari Cooper and the Dak Prescott quarterback wide receiver duo was real. Dak went down. Amari hasn't been the same. Amari got banged up a little bit here and there. And it's just not looking good. I'm not trying to say Amari Cooper can't turn things around when he gets Dak Prescott back. But even if he turns thing around, does anyone really think Amari Cooper, he's the second highest paid wide receiver in the NFL, he's the second highest cap hit for this season. Is anyone going into this season and saying Amari Cooper is the second best receiver? Heck no. There's a bunch others that are way above him. Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, DK Metcalf. There's plenty of guys up there, even young rookies, Justin Jefferson. I'm not going to make this statement now, but the argument could be made that he's not even the best receiver on his team. You, there's arguments out there that CeeDee Lamb is better than Amari Cooper, and CeeDee Lamb's on a rookie contract here. Amari Cooper is making $22 million a year. He is just not worth it, in my opinion. I hope he could turn things around. I'm not a Cowboys fan in the slightest, but I hate to see players' careers go down a the wrong path and it's not like he's done anything bad but I just don't like to see players careers go downhill I hope he turns it around I hope Dak can really revamp his career and I hope he could re-show that he is worth his value even if he does turn things around and you know puts up a 12 1300 yard season I still don't think it'll do justice to be worth 22 million dollars in my opinion it's definitely just way too much I like Amari Cooper but he's being way he's being very much overpaid and it's just not worth it to this point the Cowboys they're gonna have a couple other players on this list they just typically overplay overpay guys and it's not good management by the Cowboys moving to the third player is going to be Kirk Cousins Kirk Cousins is honestly probably a top five player of mine in the NFL Kirk Cousins Julio Jones those are probably those might be my two most favorite players in the NFL Tom Brady as well I'm a big fan of him but Kirk Cousins I love the dude but he is not worth being the third highest cap hit when you're comparing quarterbacks in 2021. He's due for $31 million. And I like Kirk. And I think he's an above average quarterback. I think he's the top half quarterback in the league. But that's about it. He's a pocket passer, not to take anything away from that. But to me, he's not even a top 10 quarterback. Just to ramble off some names that I think are better than him. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson. Uh, who, who else? Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. Matthew Stafford. I think all these guys are better than Kirk Cousins. I think a healthy maybe Derek Carr and maybe a Jimmy Garoppolo. These are kind of mid-tier guys that sit right around Kirk Cousins. But still, again, no matter where you rank him, even if he's number nine or 10 on your quarterback list, and that's 
that's given Kirk Cousins some help there. That's given him a boost. I definitely don't think he's worth nine or ten. But even if he does make your top ten list somehow, some way, he's not the third best in the NFL by any means, and that's what he's being paid. He's got the third highest cap hit in the 2021 NFL season. He's just being very much overpaid. Again, I like the dude, and I'm a big fan of him. I was a big fan of him in Washington. I was a big fan of him now with Minnesota, and I still like him being the face of the Minnesota Vikings, or at least the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. I think the face of the Vikings kind of moved on to Justin Jefferson, but still, I like Kirk Cousins kind of leading that team, but still, he is not worth the money he's getting by any means at all. He doesn't win big games. He doesn't get a lot of playoff bursts, and even when he does, took a little bit of luck to win in the wild card round against the Saints and then against the Niners, a real competition in the year they made it. He didn't do much. So for a guy that doesn't do much in the playoffs and a guy that doesn't win huge Monday night, Sunday night, primetime games, you're paying just a little too much or probably way too much. Moving on, Demarcus Lawrence, second highest cap hit when you compare all defensive players and he's making $25 million a year. Another one, Dallas Cowboys are just way overpaying, giving him $25 million a year and being the second highest cap hit. He's not worth it. I mean, at some point in time, he's a pro bowler and kind of deserved a huge contract extension. But still, in these past two years, the Dallas Cowboys, there's no, they're known for having a bad defense. So when you're paying a guy $25 million, you'd think you'd at least be able to do something. I mean, there's defenses out there that really just rely on one guy, yet they still have some talent and some contention. Demarcus Lawrence, he's, I don't want to say it's almost like he has no presence and effect on that team, but he doesn't have the presence and effect you think $25 million would buy you. Just there's plenty of defensive ends or outside linebackers, whatever you want to call Demarcus Lawrence, that are much better than him, that aren't making as much. I mean, being the second highest paid, he's making more than Joey Bosa, Miles Garrett, JJ Watt. JJ Watt's kind of past his career. Nick Bosa. There's just a lot of defensive ends and outside linebackers out there that are much better than Demarcus Lawrence, in my opinion. He is not worth the money he's getting by any means. And then moving on to the last player is going to be another Dallas Cowboys player, Ezekiel Elliott. He is making, he's a number one cap hit amongst running backs for the 2021 season, making over $13 million, close to $14 million. Ezekiel Elliott, he's a guy like Amari Cooper that's just dropped off, in my opinion. Excuse me, in his first two years of the NFL, especially his rookie year, he really changed, I don't want to say changed the NFL, but really brought his presence and his presence was felt, his energy was felt, and he really kind of was a face of the league for a year or so. But ever since then, he's just been declining, he's been going downhill, and you're paying the guy the most money amongst any running backs for 2021 there's a handful of players that are much better than him Ezekiel Elliott's not in the top five anymore I don't even have him on my top 10 but I do understand if he's still in the top 10 argument but still Derrick Henry Nick Chubb Dalvin Cook Alvin Kamara Aaron Jones Josh Jacobs even there's plenty of guys I like over Ezekiel Elliott any day of the week I just don't think he's worth the money by any means and even if you have him in your top 10 you can't tell me he's worth the number one money that he's currently getting. There's just no way at all. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, guys above him as well. Already pushing him back to top seven, top eight, and that's just rambling off the top of my head. Like I said, I don't even think he makes my top 10. I hope Ezekiel Elliott could turn things around and just show the Cowboys that, you know, they're not wasting money on three huge players. Mari Cooper being the second highest cap hit amongst receivers. DeMarcus Lawrence being the second highest cap hit against all defenders. Ezekiel Elliott being the number one cap hit against all running backs. Cowboys are overpaying three guys on your team that would really you thought would be the foundation of your team. And really, those guys are just declining and you're overpaying and you're even Dak, I think, could make the conversation. He's due for only, I don't say only, he's due for $22 million in 2021, but him signing a 40-year, or excuse me, a four-year, $160 million contract, getting $40 million a year, that's overpaying in my opinion. Again, Cowboys, there's some star-studded players there and some top talent there, but it's declining and it doesn't have, you know, the depth and the hype that it lives up to. It has hype, but it doesn't live up to the hype in the sense where these couple of players that are being paid X amount of dollars and they're supposed to be X factor players are not turning into X factor players that could carry a team to the playoffs. This Cowboys team has talent, but it's clearly not even getting them to the playoffs in the worst division of football. So bad management, in my opinion, another one, like I said, OBJ eighth highest paid receiver. I think he could turn things around, but still, I don't think he's a top eight receiver right now by any means. And then Kirk Cousins as well, big fan of him, but he's not a top three, top five. And to me, not even a top 10 quarterback right now at all. It's going to get interesting, though, as things go on, if these guys could turn things around. But, of course, I want to hear your guys' opinion. Who is the most overrated player in the NFL? Overrated versus overpaid is a little 
different, of course, in my opinion. Overrated, I do think Ezekiel Elliott's extremely overrated, and I think he was coming in. I thought his, I thought coming in he'd be a good running back, but I did think it would eventually fall downhill once he got his big paycheck and when he, and he wasn't fighting for a big paycheck. I didn't think his work ethic would be, be completely there, and I think we're seeing that come into fruition. But as always, guys, I want to hear your opinions. Comment down below, and as always, thank you for watching. Two-minute warning.